I was enjoying Apple's website today, bringing back some fond memories. They've got a very cool sort of interactive thing about when was your first Mac, and it's cool. You know, I went through the first Mac that I actually owned was the 2SI back in 1990, but I started using the early Macintoshes in school. So I've been a Mac user since the very beginning and a Mac owner for, oh gosh, I think that was 24 years now. So quite a bit of time. And so what happens here is there's this cool thing of like what Mac people are reporting doing on their Macs. So when they got their Mac, what was it for? And and here's what's interesting. Now, this is not what they were currently doing. So this only surveyed you when you were buying your first Mac. And so basically what happens is, is you tell them about your first Mac. You go in and you pick the model that you were using. So for example, for me, I went in and I said, oh, okay, the first thing that I bought was a 2SI. And so here it is, Macintosh 2SI. And then you click continue and you tell it where you were not too stalkerly. And then what you did with it and you go through and, and back then desktop video was not really an option, but I was using this for desktop publishing and I had a small business and I was in college. I did a little bit of photography. It was very early on and some graphic design and all these other things, gaming and some other, let's just say other. But the thing was, is that, you know, video production wasn't there and the web had not been invented yet. Believe it or not, there was a time when there wasn't the web. And you click add your Mac and it tells you thanks for being a Mac customer, which is all cool. And, and then a little later down here on the page, you actually see what people were doing with their Macs when they first bought a Mac. And so obviously early on in the Mac, education was a big part of it. And, you know, gaming went down and up and down and up. And this is pretty typical on the Macs. And notice here how things are kind of moving around. And, you know, right about there, you know, we actually start to see internet come out. Hey, 1989, that was about right. Mosaic web browsers, you know, started to pop up a little bit or email. You know, it was a little bit later as we started getting Mosaic web browsers, and there they get bigger, and that's all cool. But one of the things that I'm interested in is photography and video. And so, boom, there's graphic design, right? This is InDesign, Illustrator, things like that. Back here, it was PageMaker, actually. InDesign hadn't come out yet. And this is cool. And where is photography? Still no photography. Oh, there's the digital revolution the year 2000. All right, that's cool. So photography starts to play a bigger and bigger part. There's photography. It's still there. It's getting bigger. Oh, look, we finally have video production 2002. Final Cut Pro largely responsible for this. It disappears. <laughs> and okay, we're keeping an eye on it. Photography, those people bought the machines. They were still working and still photography, no video. Oh, 2007, video production comes back as being a motivating factor to buy a Mac. That's cool. And where is it? Where is it? Still photography, still photography, still photography. 2012, photography, no video. So only in 2007 and back up here in 2002, the two points at which Final Cut Pro was really revolutionary was it a motivating factor for people to buy new Macs? Now, it'll be interesting to see in 2014 if the new Final Cut 10 is a tipping point, the version 10.1 that encourages people to buy, but it's pretty clear to me where Apple's usage lies, where people are most using their Mac computers for. And just keep that in mind, and I think you'll find this whole survey a bit interesting. It's a very pretty survey to take with lots of interesting little things that you can infer by taking a look at your first Mac. Just go to the Apple webpage and click on the Mac section and you can access that.